Good morning and welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. If there is someone here for the first time or visiting, we welcome you. Please let us remove all things that will distract us or others around us and turn off all cell phones and any other electronics. We want to remind you that the bathrooms next to the hall are open for your convenience, but please do not let young children go alone. Always make sure that they are accompanied by an adult. We thank you for keeping your face mask on and maintaining social distance during our celebration today. Today we celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. From childhood, each one of us carries a keen sense of what is fair and unfair. If one of several siblings receive a treat, the other siblings will demand that they get the same treat. We know that we are called to look at life in a more nuanced way. We look forward to the word of God, which will refine our sentiments. Life happens to us in accord with innumerable scenarios. Can we weigh in a balance the relative goodness of people's lives? We enter into greater happiness when we conclude that we live in the sight of God, according to an incomparable gift. Let us all stand and welcome our presiding priest, Father Louis Reyes. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. This Mass is being offered for the health of Maria Elena Yepes, for the well-being of the Perez and Salazar family, along with Bianca Cruz and her family, 
and for the eternal repose of the souls of Manuel Sadnoval, Alicia Perez, Adrian Perez, Marcelino Rendon, Lilian Hernandez, and also like to offer this mass for a priest friend of mine who passed away suddenly yesterday, Father Adrian San Juan. Let us pray. O oh God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the squirtle forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn unto the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The Lord of the, the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise you, your name, forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger of, ki of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate towards all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is just all in his ways and holy on all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him and to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippines. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For me, for me, for me, to life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. I, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet, that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ, the Lord of the word of the Lord. Stand. Open our hearts, O oh Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off, and he went out again around noon and, a, and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, 
the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones work only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do so, to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, today's gospel reading today is a beautiful image of God's love for humanity. And today we hear the parable of the landowner who hired, who goes out finding workers for his vineyard. He goes out in the morning, midday, evening, constantly trying to bring people into his vineyard. And this is a beautiful imagery of God's love for us. God is always seeking us out. He doesn't just seek those who are holy. He doesn't just seek those, the ones who go to Mass every Sunday or even go to Mass daily. He seeks those people who have walked away from the faith. He seeks those who hate the faith. And He seeks those that want nothing to do with the faith. You know, it's, it's mind-boggling to me where so many Catholics out there don't like people who hate our faith. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy because if this, if we take today's gospel seriously, we're supposed to help these people who, help, who hate the faith into the church. We need to show them how loving, how caring, and how beautiful this church is. And Bishop Robert Barron, um, the regional bishop in Santa Barbara, he always says to get these people back into the church, the ones who have walked away, the ones who hate it, who despise the church, is to start with beauty. Start the beauty of the church to show them how beautiful, how loving and caring this church is. Not to get into theological arguments right away. Yes, that's part of it, to defend our faith and to inform them about our faith, but also to show them the beauty of the faith. And God's going to be there walking with us. When we go out there searching for people, He's going to be with us because He's also going out there. He's using us to go out there to bring people into the vineyard, to bring people to His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when we read this and just see it on the surface, we think, this is crazy. I'm with the, the guys who are grumbling, saying, hey, you know, we were here all day. You know, when I was working full time, I remember I, I, was hi I would hire people to, to work at, at the bank. And if I paid the part-timers the same as the full-time workers, what would happen to me? I'd probably get fired, right? Or one of them would sue me. But see, that's the, that's the thinking of this world. That's the thinking of this, um, of, of our very American way of thinking and very human way of thinking. In today's first reading, the prophet Isaiah tells us that God's ways are above our ways. Our thoughts are, are below God's thoughts. And what does that mean? And so when we look at the daily wage that these servants were receiving, we think of it as our faith, right? When did we enter the church? Does anyone know when we entered the church? Not physically, well, sure, physically, but like when did we become part of the church? Does anyone know? I know I'm putting you guys on the spot. This is what happens when I preach English masses every other week. <laughs> baptism. baptism, yes. So we become part of the church of baptism. And what is promised to us in baptism? 
eternal life. So most of us, how many of you were baptized as babies? Most of us, right? Most of us were baptized as babies. How many of you were baptized as kids, maybe as a young kid? Okay, good, good. There's a couple, maybe. How many of you were baptized as adults? Very few, probably none, right? Oh, there's one. But here's the beautiful thing about that. No matter when you enter the church, whether you were a baby, a kid, an adult, or even on your deathbed, the promise is the same. And this is what Jesus is trying to tell us. That no matter what time you enter the church, no matter what, when in your life you became a Christian, you were baptized, the promise of eternal life is the same. When we think about that, like, it would be easy for us to think, well, I was baptized as a kid, or as a baby. That means I'm going to get more graces, right? As I, as, when I die and go to heaven, right? No. That's the wrong way of thinking. We cannot apply our earthly thinking into heavenly thoughts. I mean, the prophet Isaiah tells us that God's ways are above our ways. God's thoughts are above our thoughts. We're limited in our way of thinking. We're limited in our way of thinking about things and doing things. And so that's the great promise that we have to go out there. And we're, we're called. God has called us. We've answered that call, right? We come to Mass every Sunday. Some of you might come to Mass daily. Some of you watch Mass daily. You've, answered, you've heard the call. You've answered the call. The next step in discipleship is to bring people to Christ. And that's what we need to imitate in today's gospel, is to bring people to Christ. We can't be afraid when someone tells us, hey, why are you so happy? Why are you so you know, carefree and you know, so positive? Sometimes we say, oh, you know, because I woke up on the right side of the bed. Or I like to say, because I actually had my cup of coffee in the morning. But the truth is, is because of Christ. As Christians, if we take our faith seriously, the craziness that's going on in the world, the craziness going on in our political life, the craziness going on in our city, doesn't affect us. Because Christ is with us. And this is what St. Paul is telling the people of Philippi. He's telling them, For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. And he tells us, he's struggling. He wants to die. He wants to be one with Christ. He wants to go to heaven already. But he says to be here on earth is a benefit for those around us. How is it a benefit? We get to proclaim salvation to the people around us. We get to bring people to the church so that when they die, they go to the place, the room that Christ has prepared for them. That's our goal as disciples. We take it further. We say that we're missionary disciples. We've heard the call. We've answered the call. We bring people to Christ. We are missionary disciples. And those, this is the main message of today's reading that we are missionary disciples because God was a missionary disciple first and foremost. He's out there looking for us. He's out there looking for our brothers and sisters, our family members who have walked away from the faith and said, I don't care. He's looking for those that hate us, that want to persecute us, that want to close our churches. He's looking for those people and he's going to use us to do it. He's going to use us to get out there and affect change in our workplace, in our homes, in the political life, in the life of the city. So my brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful, this, the message this Sunday is that we're called to be missionary disciples of Christ. We are on a mission and that mission, we're called to do it every single day. The moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep, at night and we always ask for the intercession of our blessed mother right mary mary the mother of all of us the mother of our lord and savior she heard the call the archangel gabriel came to her she said yes she took care of baby jesus taking you know all the mothers here understand what it means to take care of a child right mary did that for jesus 
And Mary suffered. You know, we celebrate Our Lady of Sorrows, not the Lago. She suffered when she saw her only son die. But she knew that he was going to resurrect from the dead. And so we asked for her help because we're going to go through some tough times when we evangelize. We're going to go through some tough times, go through some challenging things as missionary disciples. So let's ask our Blessed Mother to walk with us. And may the Eucharist that we receive today, brothers and sisters, grant us the graces necessary to be a true missionary disciple of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, God not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, we was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We all have basic needs which must be met when it comes to survival. It is important that we be, to some extent, self-centered. We cannot, however, we cannot, however, approach life as if we were the only priority. We turn our hearts to the needs of the whole world. That the leaders of the Christian people and of other religions will reflect together on the, my on the mysteries of life and encourage us to appreciate the diverse gifts of humanity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world, that citizens will take up their responsibility to be active in the deliberations of their governments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That respect for human life will bear fruit in more careful decisions about our relationships and commitments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For collaboration among the peoples of the world, that we will act with wisdom in safeguarding the earth, our common home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing for the sick and comfort for all who experience great distress with each new day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the resurrection of all who have died, especially for those who have died recently, and for all those whose anniversaries occur at this time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of Maria Elena Yepes, Familia Perez y Salazar, Bianca Cruz and her family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the eternal repose of the souls of Manuel Sandoval, Alicia Perez, Adrian Perez, Marcelino Rendon, Lillian Hernandez, and Father Adrian San Juan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters at home who are unable to attend Mass currently, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we continue praying for our frontliners, our nurses, doctors, first responders, and those affected and infected by the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, your ways are not our ways, nor are your thoughts our thoughts. Develop in us the patience to perceive how you are leading us into your kingdom. If we cling to things which do not help us, give us the courage to let go our grip, so as to have arms open to you. We ask this in your most holy name. 
Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. to be glorified, O God, who loved the human race 
and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, most Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, <clears throat> and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the, hope, the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your own Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, Renew your church, which is in Linwood, by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, Mark, our Regional Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Philip Neri, Saint Jose Maria Escrivá, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the side of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof. I only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For our brothers and sisters who are joining us at home, let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself, myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with the sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. We are working to start virtual classes with our second year of First Communion and second year of Confirmation. Please visit our website, spnary.com, to fill out the form under each respective section. Registration dates are still pending for all catechism programs. Families that received envelopes for first year of catechism, please continue to use them until you register for second year. At that time, you'll be given a new set of envelopes, but remember these envelopes are only temporary. That means that if you are not registered through the parish and you need proof of your offerings in four to five years, those envelopes do not count. So if you want to continue to be a member of the parish, please register in our office. For any questions, please call the office Tuesday to Friday, 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. Today is also Catechetical Sunday. Unfortunately, we have not started classes online to send off our catechists. But if you or anyone is interested in becoming a volunteer, you need to go through Virtus. It's the program that's required to safeguard children. And they're having online sessions this month. Please call the office for more information. In order to be a catechist, you have to go through Virtus. Okay? We are organizing a parish blood drive with the American Red, Co American Red Cross. It's going to happen uh, on Thursday, October 8th from 12 p.m. until 6 p.m. in our parish hall. Um, your participation is very important. Please let us support this good cause. You can register for an appointment at www.redcrossblood.org and make sure you uh, register with the code St. Philip Neri. Or you can call the rectory for more information. Uh, we do remind you that we are offering memorial masses with or without ashes here in our church only for loved ones who pass away during these months of pandemic. I know most people when when the pandemic was really when we were closed down, they were just giving the urn with the ashes and that was it. There was no mass. There, we, well, we couldn't have mass. Churches were still closed. So if you want to do something for your loved ones who passed away during the pandemic, call our office. We'd love to celebrate a mass for you and your family um, here at St. Philip Mary. Okay. Um, let's see. We also have candles and Paschal candles, the little ones for sale in room one from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Sunday. So. If you want a candle and you want to bless, do that after Mass too. Uh, we ask that if you are sick or if you have had contact with someone who is sick with COVID, please, 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 please do not come to Mass. Stay home. We upload the videos daily. Sometimes you'll see me celebrating Mass. Sometimes you'll see Father Ernesto celebrating Mass. Stay home. Recover. Do the two weeks. Get tested. Um, the more testing that you do and you come out negative, the better it is for our county. You know, it's the way we open up faster too. So don't come to Mass, but yes, check out our YouTube. We'll try to figure out how we connect our YouTube to Facebook so that we could put it on Facebook. Like our stuff on YouTube and Facebook. Find us, like us. That way you can update it on social media. Speaking of social media, Father Ernesto is recommended that everyone watch the documentary on Netflix called The Social Dilemma. I just found out about this yesterday, so I'm going to go watch it when I have free time, probably tomorrow. And so take a look at it. It gives you an insight from what I've heard into what's the, the, the social media dilemma, which is what it's called. So take a look, watch it. It hurts pretty good. And I think Patty has some a prayer to say for our catechists who might be joining us online. Good morning. Um, as Father mentioned, today is catech Catechetical Sunday. Um, in normal times, we would be in class and we would already be uh, preparing for the sacraments um, all around our county, but as we know, we're not able to do that today. But as he mentioned in today's readings, and I think it's very appropriate that we're all called to be uh, ministry disciples. And in catechetical leadership and catechetical um, ministry, that's what we're called to do. We're called to make disciples. Um, we're called to uh, reach out, to walk with. And so I have some of my team members for confirmation here today, if you could please stand. And normally Father would give a commissioning of some sort, but today um, what I've 
given each one of them a prayer, and I would like today in front of our uh, community of St. Philip, if we could pray this prayer as a commitment to the parish um, to continue our uh, ministry in disciple, uh, di being disciples and going out to minister to bring the youth, in our case, uh, back to the church um, to learn our faith and to be that beacon, that light into our world that we much need during these times. So if we could say, and, and if the uh, community could just um, raise their hands in prayer over the team, um, uh, and we say, let us pray. Lord, strengthen our resolve as catechetical leaders as we work to continue your mission of forming disciples in the midst of uncertainty. Give us faith and trust in you and your will. Give us hope in the fruits of our labors with trust in the work of your Holy Spirit living in and among us. Give us hope for the future of catechesis and evangelization in these challenging times. Give us love, love rooted in understanding, compassion and empathy. We ask all this through Jesus in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I ask that you continue to pray for us, um, for all ministers, uh, but us uh, especially in uh, trying to guide the youth um, in the coming times, uncertain times. Thank you, Patty. Yeah, if you're able to be a catechist, join. You don't have to have perfect knowledge of the faith. We'll form you. We'll, we'll, we'll form you. We'll give you stuff. I mean, the only person that has perfect knowledge of the faith is Christ. And we're called to be Christ. So this is an opportunity for you to volunteer. If you have time to be a catechist, talk to us. You know, we'd love to have more catechists, more. The youth need good men and women examples in their life. I think all of you guys know that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is we're kind of like a thank you for sharing. And yeah, this is this is an abode for the craziness that's out there. You know, the, sometimes I don't leave the rectory because I'm like, man, it's nice over here. I don't have to deal with the craziness outside the world. You guys have to deal with the craziness outside the world. So I'm sure it's, when you're here on Sunday, it's like, oh, thank God, I can breathe and praise God and just give thanks. Um, I know our teachers, uh, our principal here. Miss Alex Gonzalez just mentioned to me that some of our teachers are catechists, right? Actually, all our teachers are ah. catechists, Father. They teach religion every day. So our every teachers, day. may we pray for them as well on this catechetical Sunday. Yes. That God may guide them uh, through this journey as they have been teaching since, you know, August and will continue to teach uh, every day. 
um, in the name of in the name of glory of God, right? Yes. Thank you. And you know they have to teach totally different now, right? All our catech we're trying to figure out what, how we're going to teach catechism because some families don't have Wi-Fi, they don't have internet, and I don't know how they're going to, you know, with the kids going to school, everything's on Zoom, everything's online. It's like, oh my gosh. So keep praying that, you know, our kids could learn while they're at home. Pray for the parents who have to deal with their kids at home. I'm sure that's going to be a, a lot on them. And continue praying for those who teach the faith, that they may be strengthened during this time because it's, it's you know, we have to think outside the box for this. And if you're able to help us in any way, we'll take it. Okay, and don't worry, we'll form you, we'll inform you, we'll teach you. Um, like she was saying, I'm, when I teach kids, I, I learn something about, I learn something new every day. And I'm like, I'm a priest, so it's like, shouldn't you know everything? No, I don't know everything. So I'm going to be learning with you all. So keep praying, keep praying. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.